Welcome to Kush Chat. Live from 59th Street and Lexington Avenue, it's the Kush Chat Podcast with your hosts, Keon Torres and Jason V. And happy election day, even though this is a bullshit day, because politics as usual, who gives a fuck about the left? Who gives a fuck about the right? Who gives a fuck about Democrats? Who gives a fuck about Republicans? They all fucking lie to us and fucking make sure we struggle as Americans. I would agree for the most part on what he said, but these elections are kind of pretty important because these are the small people that we get to change, and these are the ones that make the rules for our states that kind of affect us. But at the end of the day, whatever. Shout out to that guy who looked back. I seen like four different white dudes trying to run for some shit, telling me to fucking um to vote for them. I wanted to ask how much money you got in your in your bank account. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta ask real quick, Jason, did you vote? Huh? Did you oh, vote? Oh, if I voted, um, of course I did. This nigga, I didn't. Go vote. I did not vote because I felt like we got screwed. I felt like they lied to us. Shout out to this Tesla. Yo, shout out to the Tesla right in back of us. Shout out to you, brother. Chris Chat Podcast every Thursday. Check us out. <laughs> What's up? Sure. You can be on the podcast. Hell yeah! <laughs> Hell yeah! Oh, we got a shout out to Wiz Khalifa. Khalifa Kush, you see that, right? Shout out to Wiz Khalifa, KK. Shout out to Wiz Khalifa. Um, but yeah, speaking of politics, the other day, last week, last Friday, I met AOC. That's crazy, cause I was watching a video like around that same weekend, and I just saw her like on somebody's vlog. I don't know exactly what they were doing exactly, but I know they were eating at that moment at the vlog. I don't know what the vlog was for, so I'm like, damn, she's out and about in, in New York City. Next thing you tell me you seen her, and I'm like, oh, shit. Why did I have a feeling about this shit that was going to happen like that? But that's fucking dope. Shout out AOC. We love you. Hope to see you on Thursday. See, this is all I got to say. The only people I fuck with in politics is AOC and Bernie Sanders. Even though this year I'm, like, kind of protesting against voting because I feel like I said once Joe Biden and Kamala Harris became president and vice president, I just feel like, and also when the Democrats won the House and the Senate, I feel like everything they said they promised us was bullshit, which it was bullshit because everything they promised us never happened. And plus, fucking Trump, as much as we can't stand this motherfucker, he gave us more stimulus checks than fucking Biden. Just to be real. I got to be a real nigga, Jason. I'm sorry. Trump is coming back. Or yay. Or yeah, I mean, but but they're both coming back because they're both going to run again. They're going to rerun the race. Yo, who do you think is going to win in a verbal debate, though, between Ye and Trump? And then I'm going to get back to I'll AOC. Tell you this, though, that would be the that would be the single documented event on hist- on TV history that would probably have the most ratings than anything else before. Those two guys on one stage are arguing about who'd be the best president. <laughs> I'd get first run spot <laughs> live on Rumble. <laughs> Fuck that, I'm fresh and fit. Or that too. But anyway, so as I gave AOC, I was with Lucy because you know we're doing the whole raise the vibrations event next Thursday. Next Thursday, November seventeenth, in Astoria, Urban Vegan Roots, November seventeenth, a showcase, open mic, come through, perform, watch great feature talents. Jason's gonna be performing poetry. But anyway, AOC might be there. I got to say, AOC, she might be there. I gave her the flyer, even though her fucking security guy looked like fucking Liam Nielsen. We should promote that with special guests of AOC. We won't be lying, technically. All right, so listen, AOC, there's a high chance AOC might be on the Kush Chat podcast. There's a very high chance AOC is going to be on this podcast. She might be the first biggest celebrity guest we ever had on this the show. Biggest person, period, on this Bro, we might have, like, the future president of the United States yeah, on the Kush yeah. Chat podcast. You heard that shit? This, and this is going to be probably the one of the the first podcasts to ever interview her before any of that happens. So we're going to get searched up a lot if people ever want to bring dirt up on her. Uh-huh. And we'll be the first nigga smoking right next to her while we're interviewing her. Who would be next? Now after we get that, we gonna how we gonna top that? If we get AOC next Thursday on Kush Chat, how will we top that shit? We would have to go for somebody like who? Somebody from Fox News. <laughs> now nah, Fox News ain't fucking with us. 
Fox News. You saw how they changed all their like banner logos right after we filmed the podcast Pussies. that time. Yeah. But yeah, so there's a high chance AOC might be on the Kush Chat podcast next Thursday for the Raise the Vibrations event, November 17th. If that is true. Not true, cause it's true. It's there is, true. it's a very high chance. But if she it's actually it's true. It's damn true. shows up, if she actually shows up, that'd be fucking, that'd be tight. I, I'd have to, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to start looking up the answers, cause I'm gonna be so in shock and just see this pretty ass girl in front of me, like, and you're running you for you Congress. Miss Congress lady. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you the whole story of how this went down. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me know, cause how the fuck? Okay. And how did you? First of all, like, I want to know, what was your initial reaction Nigga. and your thought Nigga. when you <laughs> thought? Because I know, once you saw AOC, you didn't believe your, your vision. I didn't believe it. I know you had I to, like, take three it. takes Wait, in order for on. you to believe okay, that I shit. I got to tell you, okay. <laughs> so I was with Lucy. We were planning the event. Mind you, we were getting drinks. We had, like, three margaritas and a shot. And we had, like, mad vegan food. Shout out to Lucy. The niggas that work at Urban Vegan Roots, they were, like, talking about politics. And then all of a sudden, they're like, oh, by the way. There's AOC right there. Speak of the devil. And I was like, mind you, I'm high because me and Lucy were also smoking too. I'm high. I'm drunk. It's a Friday night. Fresh out of work. I'm like, nah. That's all, that's all I said. I was like, nah. No fucking way. No fucking way. Mind you, yo, I never broke my neck for a woman in my life like that. Bro, the only person I would highly break my neck for her, and you know who it is, it's Tanache. but when I said I broke my fucking neck, I broke my fucking neck. I was like, <laughs> you, you know the exorcist, when the fucking bitch, like, <laughs> twists her Nigga neck? Nigga did a 360 and shit, like, how you just, that's, nah, but I would've done the same Wait, shit hold on, too. it gets better. I turn my neck, oh, it's nighttime already. All I see is, you know, like the Super Saiyan glow light? That's what the fuck I saw when I saw AOC right there. I was like, oh, shit. Bro, I was at a loss for words. I've never been shook in my life, bro. I I, I couldn't talk. I was like, I, 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 nigga, dead ass. I dead ass felt like I saw a unicorn when I saw AOC. So Lucy was like, let's go give her the flyer. So I was like, uh-huh. <laughs> Nigga, I'm high as shit. I'm smack. I'm thinking I'm dreaming right now. But AOC was dead ass outside right in front where her Liam Nielsen taken ass security guard who I thought was going to tackle my ass if I got like one foot <laughs> step closer to her. So we go outside and I'm just like with the flyer like, uh, uh, like a pure ass idiot. I don't know. Damn. I was like, what the fuck is going on right now? But I was like, hey. Can we can we give this to AOC? And he was like, yeah, give it to me. Like, that nigga, yo, I feel like that nigga had a fucking sh- gat. I don't know what the kind of gat he had, but that nigga was ready to shoot. I was like, oh, nah, nigga. I'm not one of these MAGA right-wing niggas, bro. I, I love AOC and Bernie. Sure he was strapped up. <laughs> he was definitely strapped up. I'm telling you, that nigga looked like a pure hitman. He looked like he fucking worked like, for a few mafias back in his day. And he was an old nigga. He had to be like 60, 70 years old. But that nigga was like, he was not for play play. Listen, MAGA niggas, if y'all try to do some shit to AOC, that nigga will fuck you up. <laughs> That's what I'm just saying. But anyway, we hand him the flyer, and then he hands her the flyer, and then she looks at us, and then we tell her about the event. And they're like, yeah, it's next Thursday. Come through. Um, it's a Queens event. You know, we know you, you rep Queens in the Bronx. I'm from Uptown. She from Queens. So come through. And she looked at the flyer. She's like, okay. And then went in her car. See, I'm so, like, crazy right now. I forgot it was my turn to smoke. <laughs> but, yo, that was a crazy moment meeting AOC. Y'all, I, I can tell my grandkids, yo, I met the first woman Puerto Rican president of the United States of America. And there's a high chance she's going to be on this podcast. And then me and Jason going to tell our Grandkids are great grandkids. We spoke to AOC. Fuck, yo. But shout out to AOC. I hope she shows up. AOC, I'm so sorry I didn't vote. I just feel some type of way. I promise I'll vote next year. I voted for you. <laughs> I know. she was. You know what? It's not too late to vote. I'm going to go vote. <laughs> <laughs> he feels bad now. 
I feel mad now. I'm going to go vote. I'm going to vote for AOC. Everybody else I don't give a fuck about. <laughs> I'll still vote for their asses anyway. Oh, man, but what a, what a week. And then, like, I worked some marathon shit that was, like, interviewing people. Shout out to Rejuve Hydration Spa. Shout out to Daniel who runs it. It's I have a feeling this IV shit is going to be a thing. They even have IVs for hangovers. Did, like, did you see people running and shit? So Sunday was the marathon. But the other two days were at the Javis Center. So they just had, like, two days of after party? No, they, they just, like, threw a big-ass event. People were, like, oh. getting their um, numbers. You know what's a crazy thing? I've been to that before. I've been to that before, but the one that they have in New York. that Because they, they have a version of it in New York. And I went, I remember when I was younger, and it was part oh, of a school trip. So somebody that we went with, they were actually going to run. So they were going to get, like, their numbers and sign up and all that stuff. Oh, but no. But this was the big marathon. Like, people all over the world came, bro. I met people from Africa. I met people from the Philippines. Like, I met so many different types of, like, people. Met people from Europe. Met people from, like, Berlin and shit. Because, you know, they do the big Berlin run over there. And I'm like, yo, people live for this running shit. Like, they just run every day. And I'm just like, yo, the next year I'm going to run the marathon. That same marathon? Yeah. Nah, the one that I went to New York was the same way, too. I met mad people there. I couldn't believe the amount of people that I saw there. Like, when I was younger, I didn't, you know, I didn't, but looking back at it when I got older, because I, I kept on hearing about it and shit, because the teacher that took us, he kept on going, and he kept, you know, I was interested in knowing if he would win again or whatever the case may be, but it's like, damn, out of all those people, imagine you just being top 10. That'd be crazy. Nah, that's true, but shout out to all the runners. It was a really lit time, but yo, we got to talk about album of the fucking year. Album of the fucking year. Her Loss, Drake, Champagne Poppy. 21 Savage, who, by the way, top four. It's official. I'm sorry. 21 Savage is top four to me. He is next to Drake. He is next to J. Cole, and he's next to Kendrick. He held his own when he rapped with Drake. He held his own when he rapped with fucking J. Cole. 21 Savage, I'm giving you your flowers, my brother. I fucks with you. And I want to I wanna verse. <laughs> That, that's that, that's how he ends up paying for the verse, like that. But not nah, for sure. That album is fucking amazing, crazy. Ooh. Her loss, perfect fucking title. Back outside, um, boys. As you see, we're back outside, and that song also is fucking lit. Middle of the ocean. That shit is lit. So how do you feel about the little shot that supposedly he took at Ice Spice? Do you believe that was towards Ice Spice? Yo, he took shots at everybody. Drake was like, nah, yo, I'm on my nah shit. I'm about to ether everybody. Do you, do you, okay, do you think that he came at Megan? Because I don't think he, he came at I don't Megan. Because, so. like, even when I first heard the song, I never thought about, I, first, I never thought about it at first like that. Because as soon as he said it, the first thing that came to my mind was, like, there's a lot of bitches that do lie about getting butt shots. Sure. And then in the internet, it was a whole commotion about something else, and I was like, "Oh you shit!" Come on, hey, we're the Chris Chat podcast. Come here, we got a question. You can speak about whatever you want. Wait, wait, wait. wait. First off, what is your names? Come closer to the camera. What is your names, and where are you from? My name is Sky. I'm from Texas. Oh, Texas in the house. What can I say? Real quick, did you listen to Drake and Twenty One Savage's album? No. <laughs> It's a very, very amazing album. You should check it out. Okay, okay. Well, that's good to hear. That, that, yeah, yeah. I'll listen to it now. Okay. What do you do, by the way? I'm a, I'm a stylist for a menswear brand. You can see the drip real quick. Wait, drip watchers. Jason, you got to do a little drip check real quick. <laughs> Step to the side, I guess. All right. We haven't done this in a minute, guys. So what's your name again? My name is Sky. Sky. Where are you from? I'm from Texas originally. Texas. Oh, all right. This is your first time in the city? No? I live here. I've been here for oh. about five years. Five years. Yeah. So when you got here, did your, like, sense of fashion ever change, or you just brought entirely, Texas with you? Entirely, entirely. Because I thought in Texas, I was like, yeah, look at me. Look. And I got here, I'm like, what the hell am I doing? Step it up. <laughs> right, real quick. What part of Texas? Dallas. Yes. He's hyped because he's been to Dallas once, so he Listen, feels like. Dallas is my, fa I've been to a lot of places in the U.S., a lot of cities. Dallas, Texas holds a special place in my heart. Amen. I had the funnest time in my life. You have no idea. What inspired the outfit today? Other than the nice puffer jacket because it's cold. I did have to go to work. Just had to keep it basic. My 
Got a little 90s, late okay. 80s inspiration. In yeah. The hairstyle also. Yeah, that as well. <laughs> Always ties everything together. All right, so it was nice meeting you and speaking to you. Can we speak to you also? Or no, you're camera shy? Yeah, sure. <laughs> She's not camera shy. She's not camera shy? What's your name? My name is Sam. Okay, Sam. <laughs> Sam. So, Sam, what inspired your outfit today? Work. <laughs> oh, so you guys just came out of work right now? What do you guys do for work? What do you do for work? Uh, I manage a salon. She manages a salon, so that's the fifth to manage a salon. It looks pretty nice, I must say. Since she mentioned salon, speaking of salons real quick, I went to a female barber for the first time, and... Oh, she and she was good. No, 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 no. She was mad cool. She was mad cool. She filmed it and everything, like posted it on her IG. Mad Ukraine people were like looking at my shit. That's probably because you was probably the first guy that she ever gave a cut to. Probably never. Yo, and mind you, she was like, yo, this is the first time I'm cutting like someone's hair like this. And she did a good job. You think so? Yeah, because she said, I, I believe so. I got a lot. I got a lot of compliments. See, see he, he's Dominican bias. <laughs> he's Dominican bias, but I'll go to her again. But I have a question. Can you have, like, hypothetically speaking, and generally speaking, actually, would you have, like, a crush on a, a female barber if she was bad? Why not? Especially if she's touching me. <laughs> Yo, if you a nigga that's in a relationship with a female barber and you cheat on her, you a stupid-ass nigga. Imagine how crazy, this, how crazy this would be if you was to have a girlfriend as a barber and the boyfriend would, ha would be, like, the guy that, for some reason, knows how to work, like, knows how to work in a salon and does hair. But <laughs> that's just, like, a unicorn. But I, I don't see, uh, uh, I guess, I don't see a lot of female barbers nowadays. I do see here and there, but... Not many that that have like a Cush chat, check us out every Thursday. Bottom line. But back to Drake and um Twenty One Savage album. To answer your question about Make the Stallion, I feel like Drake's bar about her wasn't like a shot. He was just like rapping like Eminem. You know how Eminem just like mentions random people or the game mentions random people? He was just like name dropping like metaphorically. It's a punchline. Come on, it's rap. I feel like 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 he no, did that. Soft, I feel no, I kinda feel like he did that. Knowing that people would think and assume it was about her, so I think it was probably like a triple double entendre type of thing. But I, to me, at first I heard it and it was like, Yeah, bitches do lie about getting their butt shots, so that's how I got it. Oh, well, oh, speaking of Eminem, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, Eminem is finally inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Mom Spaghetti all this weekend, you know, I'm gonna be there. And they have a vegan mom spaghetti dish. I'm fucking getting that. Yo, and if I meet Eminem this weekend, nigga, my life is complete. Well, you would definitely have an obligation to go because if he's going to open and it's going to be an inauguration, I'm pretty sure he's going to be there. Because Burner was at the NYC location of Cookies and he had, and, you know, excuse me. And, um,. My son Eminem already has Mama Spaghetti in fucking um Detroit, and I wonder how good it is. You know what? I'm actually go. I don't know if I want to go on opening free. day. Free. The first day is free. All the days are free. Just, I'll send you the link. Huh? So is is it like every day is free? All right. So what I'm saying. So is it like a uh, uh what do you call these things? Is it like a pantry type of thing? I, th I think it's like a tasting. Like, they'll probably give you, like, small, like, cartons of mom's spaghetti. Like, the sample it and shit like that. While they have, like, all of Eminem's, like, all of Eminem's photos, posters, you know, all that shit. But, yes, I will be at mom's spaghetti in Soho. And what else is I going to say? Oh, yeah, his fucking performance, amazing, with Steven Tyler. Fucking it from Aerosmith. Fucking amazing. They performed one of my favorite Eminem songs. Sing for the moment. Fucking amazing. Eminem, congratulations for being in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And he shouted literally everybody who inspired him to rap, which was fucking amazing. He said that they should all also be inducted in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, nigga, it's a long ass list. <laughs> no, he's talking about like the old rappers, nigga. Nigga, J. Cole was inspired by M. Anyway. <laughs> Oh, man, a lot of crazy shit, Jason. 
But what, what else is on the list? Yeah, yeah. I feel like we're missing something. I feel like there's like, oh, Elon Musk fucking suspended Kathy Griffin. Who I fuck with, by the way. Great documentary. Check it out. When she, you know, had a picture of her with Trump's head. <laughs> oh, shit. So, she, that's, that's kind of funny because then didn't he buy it so people could say whatever they want? That's what I'm saying. And he, and he suspended her just because she impersonated as him. That's the funny thing. It's like, come on, Elon, bro. You, you're kind of like, you know, you're not doing what you said you'd do, bro. Like, come on, man. I thought you was part of the back outside boys. <laughs> <laughs> but instead, you're in the middle of the ocean, which is a great song, by the way. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> but uh, suit game is fire. But anyway. What's your favorite song? Nigga, I literally love every song. I literally love every song. The BS song is fire too. Um, oh man, but I love the album. Great album. Uh, Elon Musk, what the fuck, bro? Um, are you really thinking about doing that whole eight dollars a month for the blue check for the Chessy? Fuck that. What about the dudes that were working we at Twitter? What about the dudes that were working on Twitter? That were working on Twitter, and they and there was like a lot of celebrities and a lot of people that were signing up for the blue check through the regular application, and they were getting denied. Those same people were getting DM'd by like VPs and vice presidents and and other fucking shit. Although I just said the same thing when I said VP and vice presidents, but they were getting hit up by workers there that were like offering the blue check verification for like 15k. People talking shit for my my son um, Elon firing whoever he fired, but it's like, how the fuck do you guys just? And then y'all got the the fucking right to fucking bitch about people. Well, whatever. But it's like, how the fuck? That's fucking funny as fuck. Like, they were getting denied, and then just a random dude just DMs them like, hey, 15k, and you can get a blue badge. What's up? And I blame fucking Instagram for starting this whole shit. Cause before this shit, people were fine with just the the, the 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 K's and the M's next to the fucking numbers and shit. Now you add a fucking verification badge only to to like known celebrity people, and it's like everybody else wanted to fucking do that shit. Yeah, all this shit is just fucking stupid. And yo, did you see the dude that fucking owns the uh, virtual reality shit? He's making a game where if you die, you dead ass die in real life. I saw that shit, and the first thing that came to my mind was like. Rich people will definitely buy this shit, own this shit, and then Oculus, invent. Some shit like that? No, he invented the guy who from Oculus who invented the Oculus. Some shit was the guy who invented some other game. It's a virtual he- a virtual headset that if you die in the game, it just kills you right there. I think, and 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 it's like, <laughs> no. Nah, but look at listen, bro. Like, tell me you would not, like, yo, it's bro. Be, yo, hold on. It's gonna be no. Hold on, hold on, cause it's fucking crazy because it's. It just gave me Squid Squid Game vibes. You put a bunch of people who is broke as fuck, and you give them like let's say half a billion or half a million um um prize uh, on the line, and you just have them mash it out in a video game, not even in real life, just in the video game, so you don't like you know physically have to feel like the hurt or whatever that you're doing in the video game. Only thing that you feel is the fucking death and shit. Like, imagine how many people would... It sounds crazy, but imagine the people that would try to sign up for that shit, bro. Yo, listen. I feel like people who, you know, have suicidal thoughts and shit, I feel like a lot of them are going to do that and just, like, lose on purpose. And I feel like that could possibly bring the suicide rate up. That's 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 another great way to look at it, too. That's another thing, too. Like, I, And the thing is that they won't even care, either. Yeah. Like if it's making the money, or if it's just bring a minute, bringing some kind of amusement to people who are, who's funding that type of thing, then like imagine, bro, it sounds sick as fuck talking about this shit, but that's crazy. Like, and, and first of all, first of all, first of all, first of all, the motherfucker who in fucking invented this shit. What the fuck were you thinking? Like, what you th- what you thought you was doing, bro? Like, you thought you was making something you were just gonna keep it on display or some shit? Like, what's the need of inventing something like that? You didn't. You couldn't take that same time and invest it into something that could have been more productive. That the fucking world could have taken or used it as a more positive thing. Like what the fuck? No, just think about this shit. The head, like the the virtual headset on itself, fine, I get it. 
But what's the point of you? Like, what were you thinking, my guy? You should be the first one trying this shit to see if it works. Listen, this nigga was like snorting cocaine. He was like, I'm gonna fucking make people die. <laughs> like, I'm just like, yo, what the fuck? <laughs> Invents a fucking dis- disease and then, uh, 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 just to have, just because they they invent, just to see if the cure that they invented, it, it can fucking cure it, and then if it does, well, let's give it to the public and make money, like, yo, bro, like, think that, like, yo, that shit is fucking crazy, like, what the fuck were you thinking, my guy? Yeah, I want to fucking tag him, cause though I want to fucking interview you now, bro. Like, what were you thinking? Your head has to be fucking crazy. I I know you've thought about shooting a school multiple times. Or shooting a public place multiple times. There's no way. Yo, niggas is just crazy out there. But anyway, all I'm going to say is, listen, ladies and gentlemen, it's been a crazy November so far. Hopefully, AOC shows up next Thursday, which will be the greatest episode of the Kush Chat Podcast. <laughs> but... But Jason V, do you have any last words for the Kush Chat faithful? Guys, stay cozy. Keep your mental right. Speak to your therapist. Yo, it was just like fucking spring yesterday. And now it's, and fucking, now it's <laughs> fucking cold as fuck. Stay comfortable. Get, go get your fucking hoodies. Get your fucking jackets. Because this weather is no play play. And if you guys ever come across this fucking game that we spoke about, stay away from it. And I hope that this game never gets to see like the day of light. On some real shit. Call me a fucking hater. We don't need that fucking game. Oh, man. What Jason said. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Keon Torres. This is Jason V. This is the Kush Chat Podcast. We are out. Peace.